Make us part of your world. Talk 921.com. Alright. We're off and running. <coughs> We're coming back on. I think I just experienced a pollen alert. <laughs> I'm the early radar on that one, I'm afraid. I, I just struggled with a little frog in the throat, and that means something must be out there, something new must be out there, or the rain and the low pressure system and the moisture and everything else as we come back in. Again, thunderstorms prevalent today, a 60% chance of rain today, 70% for Friday. Saturday and Sunday looking good. Saturday in the wee hours, there might be a little bit of rain, but then clearing. And Sunday, nothing but sunshine and 83. A real Chamber of Commerce type day. My next guest, Gretchen Quarterman, is running for Lowndes County Commission, the vacated seat that uh, John Page stepped off of, correct? That's correct. So this is a special election. This one doesn't look to advance to November. It is decided May 20th, unless there's a runoff. Hi, Gretchen. Hi, thanks for having me. Yeah, welcome to the studio. And listen, as I view that race and as I view this seat, it's the way it should be. Nobody ever listens to me, but it's the way it should be. This is a nonpartisan, not blinded by R or D in front of the name at all. It is just policy and vision and your plans for Lowndes County. Now they have to listen to Gretchen. They have to listen to your other two candidates, your two opponents. Absolutely. I, in fact, think that um, all local races should be nonpartisan um, because local issues aren't nonpartisan. Are, are nonpartisan. There aren't partisan issues about how do we handle our water and wastewater, um, what happens to our trash. I mean, it, those are just sensible community issues. It's community. Yes. Yeah, it's neighbor looking out for neighbor. It's not DR, battle lines, anything. That's correct. Oh. But to have that change would take an act of the legislature, and that would never happen. So. I this think, is an this is an awesome opportunity for those of us who are running. I think at this point in life would take an act of a higher power. <laughs> <laughs> they love what the, they love being entrenched on one side or the other. Um, I, I'll liken somebody like Tim Golden. Um, when I started talk radio here in town twelve years ago, uh, I had to. He was one of my first guests. I had to talk him into staying on board. I had to say, please, you vote policy, and because you vote policy, you get ostracized. You get beaten up. Because you just vote policy, what's best for A, your constituents, and B, the state of Georgia, you get kicked around. Your side doesn't like you, the other side doesn't, you're just voting for good policy. Well, and at the local level, um, we have so many important issues. You know, what happens when an emergency comes? Right now, over in uh, uh, Pensacola, they have uh, 20 inches of rain. What would happen to us if we had 20 inches of rain here? We have to make sure that our county is appropriately staffed and prepared for emergencies. And those kinds of things happen at the local level. Gretchen, you might have got your letter. I got mine. What's the date on that uh, Army Corps of Engineers uh, discovery? The um, presentation is going to be made at the work session and the, at the Valdosta <clears throat> City Council meeting um, upcoming. Okay. And also, Ashley Ty is going to be having um, for businesses an emergency response meeting on um, Monday, May the 5th at 5.30 at the uh, county building for businesses to understand what they need to be ready for in an emergency. In case nobody picked up on it, I just quizzed Gretchen, and she is involved. <laughs> she, she answered both uh, very well, and then of course there's a, uh, at the City Hall Annex, there's a uh, uh, unveiling of what the Army Corps of Engineers found out. Unfortunately, there's not any help coming from the federal government, and what we now know, and what we we now know to be the, the flooding that is the norm for our community. Well, that's correct. And um, one of the things that's really important in my mind is that if, if citizens could know ahead of time, so there's going to be an unveiling, there's going to be a presentation, well, that's great, but not very many people are able to come. And if these things were made available online so people at their leisure could see them, then, um, you know, if, if you happen to be working on a 7 to 7 shift, you can't go to a meeting that's at 5.30 or 6 o'clock. You're still at work. So having things online for people to review at their convenience would be really a great thing. Yeah, and Gretchen, I've said I'd love them streamed live or at least recorded and played back uh, because then it could be brought into the home at the dinner table. It could be on. In fact, the other evening when I was having my foot looked at at the emergency room. We'll talk about that in a minute. <laughs> I was wishing that the city council live streamed there so that I could watch, but I couldn't. That is a brutal campaign trail when you go <laughs> come down with an injury, a foot injury. 
Well, I, I walked out to the gate at, uh, at home and I picked up the paper from the fence and it said on the front that uh, Kay Harris had quit the paper and I fell down. So <laughs> That's unfair, but Lacey Guy actually just texted us to find a, a, a beautiful uh, lady and a, a doctor here in town of chiropractic care and rehab and said, uh, ask Gretchen about her foot if you have not already. <laughs> <laughs> I saw Lacey yesterday, yeah. She, I was limping into the, con the conference center when she was coming in also. And then I have to bring you upstairs, you're a gamer. I, I am. I, I appreciate. You know, I'm a hard worker, and uh, I'll I'll listen to anybody, and I'll try to see the big picture. So, um, please vote for me. Yeah. Again, a nonpartisan race, a special election that's coming up May 20th to fill a vacated seat. Uh, when somebody steps away during their term, uh, we need somebody representing that area immediately. Well, and one of the things about this May 20th, the election uh, voting is going on right now at Board of Elections, 2808 North Oak Street, and from 8 to 5 this week, and send Saturday, May the 10th, and 7 to 7 the final week. The last day to vote, May the 20th, in your precincts. Lots of the precincts have been closed, so by all means, check where you vote. Um, but the important thing is that um, the person that comes on and votes is probably the first vote they're going to have to vote on is the budget. Um, and the budget hearings, the, the chairman, for the first time ever that I'm aware of, had all the um, department heads come in and, and talk about the budget, and I was able to go to that. All right. The, the, what Gretchen's talking about, too, is, again, what advances to November will not be a part of that. The other races that will be decided in November, budget's done and gone. As Gretchen or one of her two opponents steps in, and uh, they, they take office immediately, and they will be deciding and voting on that, what, $80 million budget. I, I'm not positive of the size of it, and part of the reason why I'm not part of positive of the size is it's not public information. Well, yeah, yeah. And, it, and it's not decided. <laughs> and, and they're asking everybody to continue to tighten the belt and, uh, and help out because it's not we're not out of the woods yet as a, as a government ent entity. And Gretchen, unfortunately, the other thing you're going to have to step in on, I'm hearing that county government, city government, and both school systems separately are all talking about millage increases. Uh, they did talk about it at the um, retreat and at the um, budget hearing, so I don't know what the outcome of that will be. You're thinking about a fragile recovery for everybody in the United States and for our community no different. Boy, that would be a setback. One of the things that uh, Chairman Slaughter said, he said, as a businessman, um, if I had employees that worked for me for five or six years and I never gave them a raise, they wouldn't stay with me. And that's sort of the situation that the county and the schools are in. They have People haven't had a raise in a very long time, and th there's a risk that well-trained, qualified employees will leave. I've heard of the most dedicated of professionals in the teaching profession that were, that were already training for a, another life, yeah. the, getting ready to step away. Yeah. So, so there's, there's a balance there. Scary. There's a balance. So you have to say, what are the things that we really have to have, and what are the things that we can do without? And then how do we balance that budget? It's a matter of balancing the budget. All right. I know there's a lot to be considered, and it's not as easy as waving a magic wand, but uh, your A number one wish list item, what would you, if you're successful sitting in the seat, what would you like to start working toward? I really think that people would have a lot more confidence in the government if it was transparent, and that's at every level. And in order to make a change, we have to start locally. Um, Lowndes County can be a leader in Georgia. We don't just have to follow along what all the other 158 counties do. We can lead, and, and that's what I would like to see. I'd like to see us lead in terms of transparency and confidence in our government. Good. We could be the jewel of the South. Yes, we could. Plain and simple. We know we are. we got to convince others of that, and we got to stop that only Atlanta mindset. we just got to be so good they can't deny that we're here. That, that's right. That's right. And and that goes, you know, uh, the candidates that are running for the legislature, they're saying, you know, we have to bring more down here. Well, it's incumbent on us that are here to show that we can do it on our own, that yeah. we can do it. Gretchen, I'll go a step further, too. All of us working together. Everybody's got a, a wish list of about 20 major projects or items. Unfortunately, when you bring everybody to the room, some mean more to other groups, and everybody kind of segments, and then everybody doesn't end up working together. You got a project like we just cut the ribbon on, a $32 million health sciences building where everybody put down and put aside everything and work together on a project that will be a legacy for 100 years to come. If we could do that one at a time. And I think that we can do that one at a time, and I think that actually South Georgia Medical perhaps will be the key. 
Um, Wiregrass Tech is going to work on a, a health sciences building. They're, they have a million dollars for um, the design of that building, and they don't have the money for the building, but they do have the million dollars to design it. And that's a different sort of level of healthcare. And we can become a healthcare destination, which is so important because some of the rural hospitals are closing. We can we can be a gem down here. Gretchen, that maybe from a, an email I received yesterday or the day before, that money might have been appropriated. I think Tim Golden's talking about the close to twenty five million dollars. That's a, that's what it is, but it hasn't been appropriated. The, it's it's on the list of things to come. If I know Tim. On his way out, his swan song will be the secure as this dough. That would be awesome. That would be awesome. Gretchen Quarterman, she's a candidate. Lyons County District five. 5. It's the one that will be decided May 20th. It does not push through to November. It's very important. Again, a special election to fill a vacated seat. And that person that you sit down will be voting on this budget, fiscal 2015. That's correct. Wow. Big, big responsibility. And again, people, nonpartisan. You got to listen to what they have to say, their vision, their views, and otherwise. So, Gretchen, best of luck. Thank you. Thank Please you for, your, for me. Thank you for your time this morning too. Yeah, and if you haven't, uh, the 410 have already early voted. That, that's correct. And you can see the ballot online if you go to sos.ga.gov and pick the My MVP. You can see all of the ballots. You can see the um, nonpartisan, the Democratic, and Republican part uh, ballots. Well, she did, gave me a shortcut. I actually still go to lowndescounty.com, hit elections. It links me right to that state site. And then by typing in your first initial, your last name, and your birth date, your exact ballot comes up. You have no mystery as to what you're going to be voting. And it tells you where to vote on May the 10th. Yeah. And try and make heads or tails out of that uh, state uh, school superintendent race. There's like 50 people up there. <laughs> on both sides. I'm confused. <laughs> Gretchen, thanks. Thank you. All right, uh, news and sports to finish out the hour. We'll come back. We look forward to uh, Bush Wealth Management in our final hour this morning, your phone calls and otherwise. It's a good Thursday. We're Talk 92.1. Well done.